Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at chemical bonds and we're going to look at three particular types of chemical bonds and these are all described as strong. So we're looking at three types of bonds, all of these described as strong. The first one we're going to look at is called the ionic bond and this is a type of bond that happens between metal and non-metal elements. So that's quite an important point. It happens between metal and non-metal elements and it's called the ionic bond. Now, this is an example of two substances that are joined by an ionic bond, so that we actually have two separate particles there, and these two particles are what we call ions. So the ionic bond happens between oppositely charged ions. We've got one there with a plus charge and one with a minus charge. The charges are the same size, don't be fooled by the different size of particles, the charges are the same size, and those two will attract each other with an equal force of attraction. This example is sodium chloride. We can look at yet another example, this is magnesium chloride, and we would write magnesium chloride as MgCl2. We have a plus two charge on the magnesium, so therefore we need two minuses to balance out that two plus charge. So this is magnesium chloride, MgCl2. So we're going to make an important point or two important points about ionic bonds and the first one is that it involves what we call electrostatic forces of attraction. So those arrows I've done in red they, they show forces of attraction but the key term here is that they are electrostatic forces of attraction and they occur between opposite charges. The ionic bond also involves transferring electrons. So to create a ionic bond we need the transfer of electrons from one atom to another and in fact the formation of what we call ions. We're going to look at that in detail in the next video. The next type of bond we want to look at is called the covalent bond and this is a bond that happens between non-metal and non-metal atoms. So probably important to make a quick note of that. Happens between non-metal and non-metal atoms. So one example of a substance that has a covalent bond is oxygen. So we can look at what a model of oxygen might look like or a diagram of oxygen might look like. And we have two atoms of oxygen joined by a covalent bond. We often write oxygen in its symbol form as O2. One other example is that of carbon dioxide. So this is carbon dioxide. You can see a carbon atom there with two oxygen atoms attached to it. And with oxygen, this is an element, and with carbon dioxide, this is a compound. So covalent bonds don't necessarily always make compounds. We can have bonds between two same elements, or two same atoms that make an element. So the final thing to note about covalent bonding is that it involves the transfer. No, it doesn't involve the transfer. It involves the sharing of electrons. It involves sharing electrons. Ionic bonding is transferring of electrons. Covalent bonding is sharing electrons. Probably best to highlight that there. The last type of strong bond we're looking at is called the metallic bond. And this happens in metal elements and in what we call alloys. So if we have a mixture of metals, they are called alloys. And this is where we see metallic bonds. And you might see it uh, drawn like this in a diagram. We're going to look at that in a lot of detail in a future video. But the key point here to remember is that with metallic bonding, it involves the sharing of electrons as well, just like in covalent bonding, but we say it involves the sharing of delocalized electrons. These are electrons that are free to move around the structure. But as we say, we're going to look at that in detail in a future video. Okay, so this is an important overview of the kind of chemical bonds we're going to study in a bit more detail in the videos to come. But this is a nice overview and you should um, just make sure you understand the various points that are in this video. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.